Good morning, everybody. Today, I would like to take you all through a journey of my personal experiences in a career in science. I'm a chemist by profession, to be precise, a synthetic organic chemist. I work for a major biopharmaceutical company, uh, you heard Pfizer, as a chemistry a CMC team leader. So what I do is, it's CMC stands for Chemistry Manufacturing and Control, something that you may not hear uh, during your uh, education times, um, but you'll hear it in pharma. What I do is I come up with a strategy uh, for the supply of materials to take a drug through these phases of clinical trial, phase one, two, three, and eventually commercialization of the drug. Over the past few years, I've had the opportunity of working on several drugs, and some of them have made it to the market. Before I go further, I would like to share with you the story of one such drug, crizotinib. See, in our company, we invite often patients who use these drugs to share with us their experiences, to provide us with a perspective that we need when we work on drugs that save human lives. And on such occasion, I met a patient. He was a father of two teenagers, he's a middle-aged man. See, he had been diagnosed with a rare form of lung cancer, NACLC, non-small cell lung cancer. And he had gone through various available therapies. But nothing had worked for him. And this cancer had recurred. It had spread all over his body. At this time, he was given about six months to live. He had decided that he will, he will live peacefully for the rest of the six months. At this juncture, he came across the clinical trials of crizotinib and got enrolled into the trials. We're talking about the trials of the drug. As he shared with us when he met, he said after 24 hours of taking this little pill that we provide, he was able to sleep through the night peacefully. And after two months, his cancer had disappeared by 90%. There he was standing in front of us, sharing his experiences. After 13 months, pretty much living a normal life, but almost cancer-free. Think about it. I love what I do. I feel I've been lucky enough to realize my childhood dreams of working on cancer. But I surely did not start out knowing exactly what I would do. See, over the past few years, I have had the opportunity of discussing career options with people like yourself, students from high school days all the way to postdocs. They ask me a lot of usual questions. What field to choose from that onwards to should I work in academia or industry? Okay. How do I find my passion? They even ask questions like, how fast can I get promoted if I am in industry? Nice questions, but there's no precise answers to these questions. How would one find passion? Our experiences in and out of classroom are varied, diverse. But it's precisely these experiences that help us unearth our passions and help us in creating our future. See, I like anyone else started out as a person who was just interested in career in science. I wanted to study science. I wanted to become a scientist. That was my passion when I was a child, growing up in India. So obviously, I wanted to get into basic science in my undergraduate studies. Under normal circumstances, it shouldn't be a problem at all. But when I was growing up in India, there was a lot of interest in the fields of applied sciences, engineering and medicine. Probably it is there even now, okay? So when I transitioned into high, from high school to college, it was a very difficult time for me because I lost most of my closest friends, 
who were really bright, who decided to go into these other fields. I started wondering, maybe I made a mistake coming into science, okay? On top of that, I had to answer the questions from my family members, as well as my friends, and even my teachers, who wondered, why did I do this? Why did I come to pure science, basic science, okay? But the only thing that kept me going was my, was my unrelenting drive for achievement, personal achievement, and the passion for science. See, my interest in the field of oncology really did not spawn from any of my personal experiences, but rather from two factors. One, the challenges associated with finding a cure for this disease. Secondly, the stories that I had read about uh, people who have been affected by this disease. Okay? So it was from purely from a scientific perspective that I developed interest in this field to create molecules that could potentially address the needs here. Okay? So I took upon the study of synthetic organic chemistry, the art of creating molecules, constructing molecules. After my PhD, I decided to move to uh, work in, at a cancer research institute in Arizona State University. This is the first time I got the real experience of working in the field of cancer. Here is, I was doing a very interesting thing, finding for the cures for cancer from marine organisms. My research was actually on a very unique species, this Dolabella auricularia, you see it, marine sea hair, and I was trying to get anti-cancer natural products from this sea hair. That amazed me, actually, if you could do something like that. As part of this work, I developed a lot more understanding of the field of cancer and found out how deeply and broadly it was affecting people. I also had a very interesting experience there. I could visit once the MD Anderson Cancer Center to give a talk there about a drug that I had synthesized in my lab, which was going for clinical trials in this place. The experience I had there really affected me because the clinician was exp explaining to me how patients were lining up to get access to this drug. The drug that I had just synthesized in the lab, okay? And patients were already lining up to get this. To imagine that my basic research could provide healthcare solutions, that was some feeling. I never looked back ever since. So now I have completed my research in experience, gathered enough experience, understanding about the field. You always come to a transition point in life, deciding what to do next. Okay? I wanted to go to either academia, continue my work there, or come to industry. But having seen how we could bring drugs to patients, I wanted to do this more, explore this more. So I decided to join a small biotech company in San Diego, doing exactly what I loved most, chemistry, making molecules and uh, coming up with processes. I enjoyed it. I got to work on a project that soon launched a drug to the market, AIDS drug. After all those years in academia, now I started to understand how drug development is done in industry. It's a very complicated process, but I started understanding that. And then I started impacting many projects with my chemistry knowledge. And I accrued some managerial experience, they call it there, right? Got promoted. It was all rosy, guys. It was so beautiful. Everything was great. Stock price going up. We are all happy. So then, of course, something has to happen, right? And that's what happened. As you know, pharma companies are up for grab all the time. And our, my small company was taken up by a larger pharmaceutical company, which was again taken from by another pharmaceutical company. So this big company started growing. And then there are challenges in pharma in terms of failed clinical trials. Even for big companies, that's a death knell. So there were changes that was going on. Very soon I found that the group that I was part of, the almost, we call it our own empire that we built, right? It was reduced to a very tiny group. My work that I was doing before was pretty much disappearing. I had a choice to make. Continue with what you get now, 
or just bail out. I saw my friends, my mentors, all my colleagues leave the company and go in different directions. It's really hard to go through something like that in your life without the feeling of betrayal. And on top of that, I had to go through this two times. Think about it. Both the occasions, I decided to force myself to pursue my passion, adapt to the changes that was happening, maintain my focus. In retrospect, I'm really glad that I did exactly that. So working in my role, new role, I started understanding the meaning of this drug development pipeline. The challenges associated with translating what you do preclinically, the research that you do, to human trials is astounding. To give you some understanding of this, the average success rate in bringing a new drug to the market in pharma is in single digits. Just to go through these three clinical trials, phase one, two, three. It takes about a billion dollars to develop a drug. It takes about 10 to 15 years to bring one new drug to the market. Obviously, there's definitely a need for innovation here. Working in my new role, I developed a new passion. The passion of helping development teams in their process of bring, developing a new drug okay, by providing these clinical trial material. See, in it, I found the highest reward, bringing the new, novel medications to patients. Working in the field of oncology specifically, this makes a lot of sense. Because as you know, in oncology, many patients who join the clinical trials, they are suffering from advanced cancer and they have failed most of the therapies available to them. They have a few months to live, okay? We are the last resort for them. Now, <clears throat> I would like to share with you the story of one such brave patient. These patients actually join hands with us scientists in developing a drug. This is amazing. Only 5% of them enroll when they have no reason to believe that this drug could really help, okay? I'd like you to know about this one story in New York Times that I read. Really a touching story. It's about a mother of three children. She's from New Zealand. She was actually diagnosed with similar type of lung cancer. She did take the drug chrysotinum that I talked about. It helped for her for about a couple of years. But as you know, many tumors, they go through mutation and develop resistance to the drugs that you treat them with. And now she needed access to another drug. Okay? This story talks about the plight, the ordeal that she had to go through to get access to that drug. Keep in mind, these drugs are in clinical trials. They're early stage clinical trials. So we don't know any much about these drugs. And she wanted to get access to that drug. She went through all the struggles and she did get access to that drug. She was able to live for two more years. As the author puts it, she was able to live to celebrate her child's fourth birthday. Right? Folks, we have come a long way in our journey to combat this disease. We have now realized the power of precision medicine. You heard from the previous talker about what precision medicine is. Better understanding of the target, better selection of patients, and better targeted drugs. What you see there is an unprecedented response rate in clinical trials. Just to give you an idea, if, it is, if the graph is below, that's very good, okay? We have also seen that these drugs could be developed and approved in about three years, three to six years. That's just amazing. I'm so happy that I could leave to work to help in the development of such drugs. You know, I started out 
thinking a lot more about myself, my achievements in science, creating molecules. What I realized is there is something bigger than that. We need to do something to bring it to our end users, the patients. So for those of you who might be wondering but what field to choose, how do I find my passion, all I would say is that don't worry about it, just continue on your journey. It is the experiences that you gain along your journey, the knowledge that you amass, that's going to give answers to your questions. But what's more important for us is to pay attention and learn from our experiences. Adapt to the changes that happen around us. We can't be stuck with only one field that we think is the right way to go. If you're still not sure about what you want to do, I'd like to give you some of these facts to think about. As of last year, we have about 14.5 million Americans living who have been diagnosed with cancer. This year alone, we expect to have about 1.6 million or so joining this with new cancer types. And this year, we expect to have about 1,620 people succumb to this disease per day. This is just in US alone. Think about it. Together, we can do something. Okay? Thank you. <laughs>